there's this awesome joy that came upon us. I mean, I felt so full this morning, and then, you know, uh, uh, Pastor, I was talking to Pastor, I didn't get to see, but I felt so full just after worship. And I thought, well, and then to get to uh, come back again in the afternoon and then worship God again. Oh, man, hallelujah. So, praise God. Thank you, Brother Bobby, my wife, Joanne. Um, how it's great just to let them to just lead us into songs of worship and praise. And he deserves the greatest praise and worship that we could ever give. And, and I thank God for that. So, and continuing with what the psalm was leading us to just uh, have a, our hearts cleansed and, and, and anything that does not or hold us from receiving all of God's love. Let's just um, stand up and, and if I can have everybody pray with me tonight before we start. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of your precious Son, our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Oh, we thank you, Father God. Lord, our desire is that you cleanse our hearts to remove all those things, Lord God, that might pull back your love from us. So, Lord, any unforgiveness uh, that we might know or, not, or know of or not know of, oh God, we just release it unto you. Lord, we also ask, Lord, that if there's any people friends or family that we have not forgiven, Lord, we release them to you. And Lord, we ask as well the things that we have done against you knowingly or, or, or not knowingly, Lord God, we ask that you forgive us, Lord. We come before the, the foot of the throne here tonight. Lord, we, our desire is that you cleanse our hearts. And our desire, Lord God, is not to have anything hold back. You're outpouring of your love here tonight, so Lord, I thank you, and we declare in Jesus' name that there is nothing holding back tonight from hearing from your word and changing our hearts. Thank you for a new perspective tonight, oh God. The Lord, as we declare as well tonight, freedom in this place, oh God, that as we sing praises to you, as we ask for your forgiveness, oh God, I, I declare tonight, oh God, Healing is fell upon us in Jesus' name. The Lord deliverance in this place, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Lord, there, there's freedom from, from uh, depression in this place tonight, oh God. Freedom from any pride or anger in this place tonight, oh God, in Jesus' name. We thank you, oh God, that tonight there's nothing holding us back from just receiving everything that you have for us tonight. And I thank you and I declare in Jesus' name that we will not be the same from the time that we walk into the time that we come out from this place. Oh, hallelujah. And all of God's children say, Amen. Oh, praise God. Now, before I start, I would just like to ask if there's anybody I would like to share any testimony about how good and great God is, or if there's any answered prayers, uh, if there's anybody who would like to share a uh, quick testimony, if not, we'll continue. So, um, funny thing just happened to me quickly, um, I think it was last night, uh, we got a call from, from one of our friends from Angela's Temple, and, 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 and they asked us to, to, to go to a dinner, and kind of like a fellowship Bible study, and we're like, it's a last minute thing, we're not doing anything, okay, we'll show up. So we show up to Culver City, uh, just so happens, you know, we're there, and then uh, there's no signals on the phone. And then dinner plate was all set up, and we're going to eat, and, and somebody tapped me and said, hey, um, we're having a Bible study tonight. I said, yeah, that's what, that's what we came here for. And he said, uh, do you mind bringing the word, the message tonight? I said, man. I didn't prepare anything, but okay, sure. And um, I thought, well, how awesome is that? that, that you know, you, you, you get to share. And, and thank God for, um, um, you know, Pastor, I know Pastor uh, Bobby had a Bible study on um, Friday, and Pastor Hector shared with us some of that stuff. And, and what the Spirit of God was just revealing to me about what Pastor said about what we're going to go through, it kind of, it all tied up. So that was the message that, that, that God gave me uh, to give that night, and, and, and that's what I'll be sharing. But one funny story was there was no signal. 
in Culver City. There's no phone signal. So, uh, you know, very, uh, there's no calls or anything coming in except for the landline. But, you know, we were in a prayer, we were like so deep in prayer that, you know, this is how funny that is. You know, um, God put into my head that we're praying, just like how we were just praying just right now. We were praying, yes, Lord, yes, hallelujah, thank you, God, oh, hallelujah, thank you, yes, Jesus. And all of a sudden, anybody ever lost a drop of call? On their phone, like they, they missed the call or you know the, the, the signal went out. See, that's all of us, right? So all of a sudden, God gave me this vision that I'm praying, and then we're all praying, and then all of a sudden, hey God, hello? God, hello? Hello, God? And then I have to stop the prayer and I have to tell the people, hey, you know what? I think I dropped the call. Hang on. Let me just get back to God. But this is what God told me. He said, that was, that was something that I wanted to show you. Because when you pray unto me, there will be never a drop call. That you're always connected. And I say, oh God, you're, you're, you're kind of funny because that's how I kind of picture it. I'm like, oh, are you still there, God? Still? It's not him that got disconnected. It's like, it's me. So I thought, well, Lord, and he, he was just saying, you know what, Ben? Even here in Culver City, you're still connected, that you will never drop a call, and you will never miss a call from you, because you're connected always. And I thought, how awesome is that that God was just shared uh, in a way that, that, that I get it? Because all of us were kind of worried about, oh, you know, there's no call, there's no texting, there's no, but God was saying, no, don't worry, I'm still connected. So today's message is about, um, about getting back in the saddle. And this kind of ties up with, I think, Pastor Bobby's message on Friday that the pastor shared with us, Pastor Hedgon, on Saturday. So, getting back on the Sabbath. Um, and Ecclesiastes uh, chapter 10, verses 5 through 7. If you guys are there, say amen. Not on the screen. Okay, getting back in the Sabbath. Um, let me read the verse. Uh, it says on verse 5, it's chapter 10, verse 5, it says, There is an evil I have seen under the sun, the sort of error that arises from a ruler. Fools are put in many high positions, while the rich occupy the low ones. And, and we're going to focus on verse 7. I have seen slaves on horseback, while princes go on foot like slaves. For the past couple of weeks, I've been uh, um, um, working quite a bit. You know, I just graduated from Bible school, and, and you know, working a lot kind of entails, you know, working 12 hours. Sometimes I would do like a four-day run. In the 12-hour cycle, um, there are times that you know we open up a prayer, thank God that there, 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 there's an opportunity where all of God's children, before we start work, we. we Worship and praise and, and, and offer up a prayer. And then throughout the day, you're kind of busy. Hey, um, you know, where was I there, son? Did you think about me? Or wait a minute, son, um, I want you to share. But you kind of too busy. So there was this thing that God was just telling me in the past couple of weeks that, you know what, son? I put you in a high place, just like being on a horse. But, son, you, you, you step down out of that place and you're walking now. Um, so what God was just revealing to me is that, you know, sometimes, even though, I, I'm not talking about um, um, you know, backsliding. I'm talking about living a life that is diminished because you only allow God this portion of your life because you're so busy with work. You're so busy with doing other things. Maybe there's a thing that you, you're wanting to do. There's many of our motives that you have that benefits you. So you're doing a lot of things that, that kind of diminish the Spirit of God in us. That it's the same thing as God said, no, I have you on a force where your spirit filled, that you're being yielded, that you're surrendered, that you're following. But my son, I see you. It's very subtle, mind you, that you're starting to get off that horse. And how foolish that you start walking. And, um, you know, when, when, when Pastor Hector shared to us uh, about uh, 1 Corinthians 15, I would just like 
18 guys. 1 Corinthians 15, verse um, 34, we had this uh, as a Bible study uh, on, on Saturday. It says, come back to your senses. In um, uh, King James, it says, awake to your righteousness. And then also, I think in, in Living Translation, it, it talks about um, um, awake to his holiness, to, to, to holiness of light. And I thought, wow, what, what, what do we need to awaken for? What, what, what is it that, that, that we need to, 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 to find in this holiness of life? Because having a diminished life is like, like slumbering or sleeping. When God causes you to be up on that horse, or be awake, yielded and surrendering, just having constant communion, with the Spirit of God. And all of a sudden, you know, I, sometimes we, we give the enemy too much credit about the world and the enemy, but it's our free will, it's our business, it's our ch choice that we start to just like inch off the saddle a little bit to the left. And then we start to like, ah, uh, get off a little bit. Okay, I'm still on the horse, but, and then we start to go down gradually. We're not backsliding. But then again, we're not fully operational because now we're walking instead of riding on the horse that can take us in such faster speed and, and, and greater distance than we can ever take ourselves. So it says to come back to your senses and stop sinning. For there is some somewhere ignorant of God, I say this to, to, to your shame. So, Paul was just talking about, man, wake up. Wake up. I see that this life that God has given us should be something like an uh, uh, um, accelerating life. Where continuously God is growing. Every experience that we have with God causes us to just buckle down on this saddle that we don't ever want to get down. That every experience that we have with God just says, oh son, you belong in that cell. Keep holding tight, son, because you're in for a ride. Not that you're steering left or right. It's my spirit that's causing it to be. It's my will. It's my word. It's my purpose for you. And how awesome is it that, that God is saying, hey, you're walking, man. And, and Right on that horse. And, and I love how, how Pastor also talked about it in verse 50. It says, The flesh and the blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Well, when we're all up on that horse, it's spirit driven. So all you do is just sit back. You let God speak to you. He will take you. He will guide you. He'll direct you to where He calls you to go. And don't worry where it is. Because you're going in His name. You will do it in His name. But what ends up happening is our flesh, see, it didn't talk about the enemy. It didn't talk about the world. It talked about our flesh can never inherit the kingdom of God. So, hey, our flesh. Because I can blame myself. I don't want to blame you guys. But I know how, how to condemn myself, but that's another topic, but I know when I've done wrong. But my flesh starts to pull back and get off that course. Yes, I'm still a Christian. Man, I'm, I'm even a graduate of the ABI college, which means nothing. Right? But, man, uh, I'm like, man, what is this? I'm not backsliding, but it says, Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Why well, can't I be in the spirit? I can't be walking. Man. I was like, and then, verse 58. Pastor taught us, therefore, on the NIV, if there's a therefore underlined and circle it, I've actually circled it and highlighted and underlined. Therefore, my dear brother, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully 
to the work of God. Wow. So here I am. I'm walking. I heard this verse. First verse was awake. Talk to your senses. And then the, the last part it says, Beloved, my son, my daughter, stand firm. Let nothing move you from the place where I cautioned you. So he was saying, he, he was saying, he doesn't talk. Hey, this, this is just me, right? This is how, how God is. I know some people, they say that God has sometimes, sometimes have a loud voice, kind of like in a wrath. Like, ah, oh, I'm going to shoot you with lightning. I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, like hell and death. But I hear God, such an encouraging, calm, soothing voice. But I hear you say, you've been walking. I see you, son. My vision of you never changed. I see you physically, you're walking, but in the spirit I've always seen you. This Christ is in you. I see you upon that horse, my son. That's me the all. So I see myself walking, and God is just talking to me. And He gives me a pat in the, the butt a little bit. Hey, just remind me, hey, son, get back up on that horse. And it's so reassuring, it's so calming. And it's not, it's not like in a punishing way. It's not like a whip or and then you just jump up and get back on the horse. He was just like so soothing and calm and reassuring and says, hey man, you might even do this a couple of times. It's okay. I'm still here for you. I'll always be here. I'll never drop your call. You'll always have signal. So he pats me in the butt. Hey man, get back up. And here I am. I'm like, wow. And this is what I wanted to talk about, to kind of continue with, with, with what that verse was. I've been reading in, in 2 Kings about Elijah and how awesome of a man that was put in such a high position, he was put in the sand. You know, in 1 in Kings, the last chapter, Elijah was told by God, you know, to pick uh, the, this, you know, with the prophet coming after him. So Elijah got his cloak, threw it over Elijah. Well, while Elijah was work, Elijah, Elijah was farming. He was plowing. He had some oxen. He was plowing. He was like a farmer. He's like me, just you and I, regular old people, farming. That's how he made a living. Plowing, uh, plowing the field. Elijah comes up to him. Because the Spirit of God showed him, threw a cloak over him, and said, My son, you've been chosen. You're the next prophet that God has chosen. And then Elijah, right when he received it, he received it, mind you, because this is what follows. He said, uh, Elijah, one second, okay, one second, just one second. He ran back to the farm. He said bye to his dad, to his mom. See ya. And then, the oxen that he made a living, and then the, the, the plow, he burnt it as a sacrifice to God, saying that, you know what? The very living, the, 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 the very rich uh, living that he made out of the oxen and the plow, he said, I'm burning it. Please, you guys go eat. Here's, here's the, the, the oxen that I was using. Eat. Killed all of it because he said, you know what? I have nothing to come back to in my own life. No longer will I be plowing. No longer that those oxen will help me because there is nothing else in my old life that I need because now this cloak that the Holy Spirit has put upon me, this cloak in my life, supersedes anything that is behind that point. So Elijah looked forward and never looked back. How awesome is it in, in 2 Kings? The calling that he has in his life, the place that where God put him in the throne, I mean in the in the in the, um, in the seat of our horse. In 2 Kings, uh, verse uh, chapter 2. I'm just gonna go over 2 Kings because it's kind of like a summary. 
In chapter 2, verse 9, Elijah knows that he's going to be dying pretty soon, that God is going to take him. Not that, that God is going to take him. So three times, Elijah told Elijah, hey, you know what, maybe you should go somewhere. First time Elijah said, oh, no, 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 I'm not going to leave. It's okay, I'm with you. See, Elijah was saying, you know what, and in some aspect, you know what, I know God called you, but go, go somewhere else. It's okay. Elijah knows that there is a great calling in his life, that if he leaves, he's going to miss something. If he ever compromised getting off that horse, then yeah, something might be missed. So Elijah kept hanging on to that horse and saying, um, Elijah, I know you're, you're my master prophet, but I'm going to stick around until the end. I'm going to stick around. I know that the, that the end is coming for you soon, but I'm not going to go. And then Elijah did it again. He said, uh, you know, he was saying a couple of things. Da -da 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 -da. He said, he said, stay here. I'm going to go that way. And then Elijah said, no, 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 no. I'm going to go with you. I know. I, 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 God has a calling for my life. I can't. I know you're my master. I'm supposed to follow you, but I know it's close. Something's happening. God is staring something up. The Spirit is telling me. I, there's something happening. So the third time, Elijah, I, I'm sure he's not getting irritated. He said, hey, you know what? I gotta go somewhere. Really? Can you please stay here? Elijah, Pastor, no, no, no. I gotta go with you. I, I gotta be there. He can't get off that horse. And as soon as he stayed in, Elijah, finally, the third time they all went for the them, and then Elijah asked him, hey, on verse 9, tell me, what can I do for you before I am taken from you? Man, what can I do for you before I'm taken from you? Ah, man, Elijah, being in the spirit already, already went through and, 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 and had that calling in his life, yeah, he, he answered Elijah, he said, let me inherit the double portion of your spirit. Man, a double portion of your spirit. Of course, Elijah is not the one that will give it. But Elijah gave him word that if you see me being taken away by chariots, um, by chariots, um, surely then God will give it to you. So, Elijah said, if you see me being taken away by chariots, then God will give me that double portion. So, he, he's just saying, stay on that horse, my son. Don't ever leave. Don't get down. Keep your eyes focused on me. Don't, don't, don't look away. And don't get off that horse. And then as soon as he stayed focused and, and then held on that horse, you know what happened? Chariots of fire took Elijah. And then what happened? Poof! Elijah was gone. What remained was there was a cloak that Elijah was wearing. The same cloak that Elijah, you know, hit the water with and the water parted. So he picked up the cloak. Elijah said, wait. Elijah said, if I see him, get picked up by chariot, then I would get this double portion? That was not a question. That was a declaration. Because he never doubted God. Because that's what Elijah said, if you see me. And then his word was, where now is the Lord, the God of Elijah, saying, where is the Lord? The question, it, it, it's not so much as a question, where is he? But what he did was, because if, if that was me, I would have pushed, where, where is he? You saw, you saw, you saw the, the chariots of fire, Elijah's God, you saw the clothes, like, hey, go, where are you? Where's Elijah? Hey. But this is what he did. He picked up the cloak, he asked, 
Where is the Lord now? And then you know what he did next? Hit the water. See, there's a difference. He already declared that God already uh, uh, called him because there was this cloak that was put around. And then when he picked up that cloak, he already knew and declared that this is the double portion that he has. That that, that question didn't even have to be put, uh, asked. That all he needed to do, which he did, strike the water and the water parted. And then throughout the book of 2 Kings, we see that Elijah performed many miracles. You know, all of us here have witnessed firsthand healing from God. All of us here have witnessed and actually laid hands on people and, and caused them to be delivered in Jesus' name. All of us here had communion with God, where He spoke to us so clearly and evidently that we are called. You know what? I just picture ourselves just being that Elijah, performing, raising up the dead, seeing God take, you know, it, it's, it's physical, but it's all so spiritual that we see things, that we've seen God in the Spirit many of the times in healing, in deliverance, and in our salvation, that we see Him so evidently that we're so much closer because we have Christ in us. That, 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 that when Elijah experienced all this, he just kind of, every experience that we have with the Lord, it just kind of buckles us up and says, just hold on. So we, we won't ever try to get down. So what ended up happening? Elijah exemplifies somebody who's on that saddle. Exemplifies his trust in God. That every experience that he has with God. All those miracles. And, and, and can you imagine hearing from God? You're the God's messenger, which we all are. That he never buckled down to just get off that horse. Because on that horse, we get to see in the spirit. We get to live in the spirit. You know, um, um, one of my prayers before is, Lord, you know, I, I really want to see in the spirit. And I really want to experience you in the way. Oh, Lord, I want to see from your eyes who I am in you. And when he showed me, you know, it, it's almost, it's almost, man, is that really me? Yes, it is. And it's me and you that allows me to see you that way, my son. So I thought, wow, Lord, you're awesome. No, no, no. You're awesome in me. That makes me awesome, too. But, but, Oh my God, thank you. The man, I see a lot of me that I, I can kind of condemn myself, like I said. Man, when he, he gives me that sight of who I am in his eyes, oh, how awesome, how wonderful it is that he sees me that way. Even if I'm still committing to sin, even if sometimes I still get off that voice, He still sees me for the son that I am. Because I still have Christ in me. And because of the Spirit of God in me. And then, in verse, uh, chapter 6, verse 16, Elijah was um, 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 sought after by, 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 by the king. So the king sent out his army. He went to the city, and then the army surrounded the city. Oh, man, I'm just thinking, wow, Elijah, and then there was a servant there. Can you imagine? I don't know if they didn't mention how many people in the army, but chariots of horses and, and, and army surrounding the city. Man, who wouldn't be scared? Like, if I see those, I'm like, man. 
maybe in today's terms, you know, you got tanks, you got helicopters, you got, you got, you know, um, um, semi-automatics, uh, walking arms and bazookas all over the place, in this place surrounding us. And there's only us here. But see, remember, when you're up on that horse, because your spirit yielded, your spirit driven, that you are surrendered to the spirit of God. That remember, warfare is not in the, 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 the physical, warfare is in the spirit. So when you're sitting up on that horse, there was Elijah and his servant. They had different positions, of course. Elijah was up on that horse. The servant was still walking. And then the servant caught eye of all the army around the house, outside the range. And of course, the servant was afraid. The servant was scared. And the servant saw with the physical eyes how many, and there's only two of them. So with our physical eyes, we see circumstances, we see problems, we see so many things that yes, we can be afraid of, that yes, it can threaten us. But look what, what, what Elijah being up on that horse, said to the servant, don't be afraid, the prophet answered, those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Man, isn't that the same as this, this, this he, was, he who is in us is greater than he that is of this world. But look how, how calm Elijah is on the road to say, hey, a servant. Yes, you can see thousands of armies surrounding us. But the army that is with us is far greater than the army that you can see. But see, the servant can see what Elijah saw in the spirit. Because I'm sure Elijah saw it in the physical, but he sees also in the spirit. So Elijah prayed, O oh Lord, open his eyes so he may see. And the Lord God opened up the servant's eye. And the servant saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire around Elijah. Oh, imagine circumstances that loom against us, armies of this world, of, of the enemy, going against us. But in the spirit, God had already put charge. Horses and chariots of fire to protect us. See, when you're up on that horse, you can claim all those. You see the spirit that God Almighty already has chosen you. God Almighty has already showed you how good He is, how faithful He is. And when you stay up on that horse, every experience that we have with God Almighty. The Spirit of God just causes us to just buck down on that side and never want to get on. Because it's in the Spirit that we now all see. And we don't want to go down uh, off that horse and start looking with our eyes again. For God already opened up our eyes. So, my challenge for every single one of us here today. You know, we should all be excited that we're up on that horse. That we should already be declaring of God Almighty, thank you. That you have opened every single spiritual eyes in this place. That we see in the spirit. That you already put charge. Horses and chariots of fire. On our behalf. And how do you apply this? 
into your life, right? So here I am. I woke up this morning. Thank you, God. And yes, I take place where you have put me. Top of that verse. And Lord, I am excited. For in the Spirit, you already put charge. You already given all these things that I can ever, ever need. That I can walk excitedly, knowing that, oh, hallelujah, my wife gave me a perfect example. A lady, pregnant lady, came out with us, coming down to the elevator. She was pregnant. And then we had a talk with her. Hey, um, how, how many months? And then is it your first child? And then she said, it's mine. And then uh, so the first thing she said, I was scared. You know what my wife did? Hold her aside. They sat down, they prayed. And then she felt relieved afterwards. And then we were just kind of witnessing a little bit. And how awesome is it that when you buck down on that horse, that you're riding in the spirit, Man, how awesome is it that when the Spirit of God is upon you, and He said that the power is in you already, that we are expecting you to be going out and say, Lord, send me where this hands can lay, that I can pray, oh God. Of course, it's not me healing, but Lord, by the power of the Spirit, in Jesus' name, that they may be healed, that you will just come excitedly serving unto God because it says right there commit fully to the work of the Lord that in a ministry just like we went out about a, uh, two weeks ago going out in the park with no reservations not fearing anything we even prayed the night before for that park serving God that it says if you commit yourself there and you labor fully for the work of the Lord, it says at the very end in 2 Corinthians that you will never labor in vain. It just means that if you keep working in the Spirit, if you just keep seeing in the Spirit, if you keep warfaring in the Spirit, being on that saddle, you will never work in vain. And I thought, wow, here I am, I'm a Christian. I think I'm still working for God. Very, very diminished. You're not working with the power of the Spirit in you. And I thought, you know what? Let me get back on that verse. Hallelujah. And Lord, send me for your boldness. It's in me to lay every lay hands on every person that will that you will show me, oh God. That you will cause me to pray. And always be in the spirit of God. And Lord, worship without hindrance, oh God. That it's just you and me. Nobody else in this place. That I can just raise up my hands and praise you. And I thank you, God, because you've still given me that joy of my salvation. I can just cry out. Knowing that where you rescued me to the place that you put me. Oh, what great joy. You know how awesome is it that the horse that we ride, you know, in, in, in the New Testament time, is the Spirit of God. Get back on the saddle. That this, you just ride into where the Spirit takes you. And you'll get farther. You get, you get to places that you've never been. Versus you doing it on your own and walking on foot. Man, the Spirit of God just, just yield yourself. Less than surrender. And where He takes you, His power goes with you. And I thought, wow. It just gets me excited about what the day is. <coughs> Having real expectations. You know, we had a prayer about, about, about us going out and, and, and making a difference in this community. You know, the first time that we did it, it's an awesome, you know, some people it was their first time, some 
when we claim it, we know that we have it already. When we ask, we still have that blindfold saying, God, I don't know if I have it or not, but Lord, I would want it. When we start to declare and claim, see, God, thank you. Thank you. Because you've given it to me. And I just forgot it. It was just, it was just like a blank spot in my memory. But thank you, God, for reminding me. And I already received it, you know. Uh, early when we were in the worship, I was like, thank you, God. Oh, yes. Thank you. And yes, Lord, you delivered me from me walking. And then now you put me back into the place where you have caused me to be. So, my challenge is all of us who gets up on that horse needs to go out when we serve like we've never had. Visualize it in the spirit. Warfare in the spirit. His victory is in the spirit. And I thought, you know, this is us. How oh, God is just moving in this place. And not one of us here will be left behind. That we will move as a unit, as a body. All filled with the spirit. Cause to move by the spirit. To go where the Spirit leads us. And I thank God for that. You know, little lessons like this, I thought, oh God, this is something that's this. It's a like radical faith. We have faith. But God just says, no, I'm, I'm just going to release it. Say, Lord, I just declare over every single one here, Lord God. And Lord, you're going to cause every single one more to just have radical faith. Faith that just sees in the Spirit. Faith that just, 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 it, it, you know, if you've had five to ten years of, of following the Lord or being with the Lord, then I just declare that, that, that there's a double portion. That today, there's two times of what your faith was before you came in here. That every single one will be moved. By this faith. That this declaration is for all of those that receive and claim it. And I thought, Lord, all of these things that you're teaching us, they all tie up. There was a prayer for these four walls will come down. That this is no longer be a church that will be held by four walls, that this church will just move out to affect the communities. And I have a block. But it takes for us to just be on that horse, to be on that side. Start claiming. So, for all those that want to claim victory, we'll close in prayer. And there are some people I mean, here that, that, that might have been walking for a little while. And if you know, that could also be me. We've been walking in. You know, it says right there, if you're on flesh and blood, and you're doing it on your own, you're laboring in vain, so we get tired, we get weak. And God is saying, inside, and I got you on the horse. Get back up. And there are those who might have never experienced this riding on the horse, but today, let's claim it. In His name. We'll claim it in Jesus' name. As we get back on that horse, as we go down to our calling, that we will never look back. That we will see in the spirit the victory that God has given us. That we will see in the spirit the newness that, that He has given us. That we will see in the eyes of our Father. And God, how awesome is that? So for all those that want to 
Pray with me and agree. We'll pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of your precious Son. In the power of the Holy Spirit, I thank you, oh Father God, for your word here tonight. I thank you, God, that you're just releasing this double anointing, oh God, that we will declare and claim in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you that you put us in a position, Lord God, where our spiritual eyes are open, that we will see in the Spirit, oh God, just like you said, Lord Jesus, that we ought to worship you in spirit and truth, that we ought to warfare in the Spirit. Lord, I thank you that you put us in a place where we just see you in the Spirit. Our victory is in you, oh God, in the Spirit. And Lord, I thank you, Lord, as you have cost us to just get back on that horse, we declare and claim in Jesus' name. And we will no longer live in a diminished life, oh God. That every opportunity, every uh, uh, open doors, Lord God, we will walk into. Things that you will open for us, oh God. Lord, cause us to pray in such a way that we pray in the Spirit. Cause us to lay hands on people where we lay hands in the Spirit, oh God. Before we even lay hands, you have cost us, Lord God, to just find that in the Spirit. That you would give us discerning in the Spirit, oh God. Lord, totally yielded, totally surrender, Lord, to your Spirit. We declare tonight, oh God, <laughs> that we are those that see horses and chariots of fire, that you have good charge, that we will not be afraid. But yes, Lord, we have awakened in Jesus' name. But yes, Lord, we stand firm. We will not, not let anything move us. Yes, Lord, we declare and claim, Lord God, that fully we commit ourselves to the work of the Lord for only that, Lord God. We will never labor in vain. Thank you, God, for this time. Oh, Holy Spirit, cause this refreshing reflection of who we are, of how you see us, oh God. To be what operates us from our daily basis, oh God. That we live in the Spirit for our physical eyes, oh God. These are too many things that we should not even bother or see. But thank you that our spiritual eyes, oh God, in Jesus' name, just opened up in a way that our faith has doubled. Just like the double anointing, double portion. Lord, we thank you for tonight. We give you the highest praise. We say hallelujah. We give you thanks. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.